Hello, hello. Good Welcome. Evening. Good evening. I'm super excited for tonight. We'll allow a few more people to get in here because we have a treat. Not only has this concept been blowing up, but what we realized is we're not the only ones making this connection. And there happens to be some other things that have come about uh, just even recently more trending topics that kind of relate to this topic as well. So I'm a uh, I, I think it's more important now than ever to get off the yellow brick road. Straight out of Oz. <laughs> yeah, and so Pretty tonight awesome. what we're talking about is what happens when Dorothy wakes up. Like this is part two of our series. And what, what does she do now that she's woken up? She realizes, um, you know, she had it in her all the time. And what the wizard pretty much said was get self-directed. Right. Take control. Yeah. Don't be a victim. That's right. Start right. learning yourself and we can do this, guys. And so we're going to uh, kind of give a recap. I think it's probably best for those who did not see part one so they don't feel lost. Just I made a quick recap video for you. I think you're going to like it. Awesome, by the way. Yeah, I think you're going to like it. Thank you so much. It's and a bop. It, it's a bop. <laughs> it's a ditty. It's a ditty. All right. So let's. Um, Let's quickly recap for part one, and then we'll come back and we'll all be on the same page for part two. Here we go. Oh. No, that's this is how you do it. You're going to see a wizard? Mm -hmm. Won't you take me with you? Why, of course I will. Hooray! We're off to see a wizard! <laughs> We're on our way to see the wizard To get him in the heart On our way to see the These are the celebrities, influencers, and all the stuff and things. They made them all believe they had to be a certain way in order to go see the wizard. Oh, you're the best friends anybody ever had. And it's funny, but I feel as if I've known you all the time. You're a millionaire. The max you can take in income is forty thousand dollars a year. We like you to keep your promise to us, if you please, sir. Not so fast. That math does not matter. No. But you it don't doesn't. learn this until you go and meet the wizard, until you sit down with that financial advisor when it's time. Why don't you know this at the start? I'll have to give the matter a little thought. Why don't you know this at the beginning when you first start your retirement planning? Glenda shows back up. She's just like, hey girl. So you made it. You met my friend, the wizard. Look at you guys. Aren't you guys excited that you did went through all of this? Can you help me? You don't need to be helped any longer. Glenda, actually, why don't you just tell us back there? Why didn't you tell her before? Right. Why don't you just save everybody the heartache? Matter of fact, what the heck have you been doing? You really wanted us to win and this mattered to you. Why not just share this information? She had to learn it for herself. Glenda is not a good witch. Who benefits? We're rewriting the story. 
Glenda's out, she's not a good witch anymore. People like that are always positioned, like they're the rich, they're the wealthy, they know everything. They can silence a room if they wanted to, to say nothing at all. What have you learned, Dorothy? I should have thought of it for you. I should have felt it in my heart. No, she had to find it out for herself. Oh my! That was it. That's the recap. Did you guys dig it? Are you into it? <laughs> okay, so what happens now, guys? Uh, in Just based on the storyline, she wakes up, right? She's got Auntie M there, Uncle Henry, Auntie and this is kind of all of us. We're waking up after we've left Oz and realized like all of this was just fake. It's all just a dream, the American dream specifically, that we've been sold is true. We've been told to go down this uh, yellow brick road we learned that the wizard wasn't real and then now what and it's so impactful right because you know she wakes up and who's around her people who um you know may be a part of that silent generation who are saying to her come on all you got to do is like i get it i get it the world is yeah, look at me I'm, I'm in decent shape you know i've got my pension fully intact all you got to do is you'll be you'll be just fine right like, sit, sit, sending her down the same path that she just woke up from right well, the other thing is, think about it. This is so telling. And when you really peel back the layers of this movie, you go, geez, like all of this is just playing out in real time today, even. Right. But Inflation this movie, is high. Um, but this movie uh, was made so it. long ago, right? Right. But but the tornado of of this disastrous uh, experience that's happening within uh, the financial space or whatever, the, you know, golly, it, it, is, it is so definitely relevant. So, yeah. But but on top of that, um, what I think is the most interesting, what happened here? Okay, we're, we're good. Something happened on the, on the screen. What I think is the most interesting is that uh, when she wakes up, she's trying to explain to them what she just learned, right? right. She's trying to go like, hey, guys, wait, this whole thing happened. This, this, it was real. And they're like, oh, was it though? Like, Dorothy... It's okay. Just you bumped your head. It was a you went through a tornado. We're gonna get Everything back. Fine. Yeah, it's just we don't want to hear what you have to say. None of this dreamer type of stuff. You're such a dreamer, right? But take I think control. That's... What do you mean take control? Dave Ramsey said. <laughs> right. <laughs> Susie yeah. Right. Said. Right. Right. And and so she's trying to explain what she learned. Like we have to get educated. We have to do this ourselves. And they're going like, get her some water. Just whatever and i think a lot of people wake up and they are experiencing the same thing right they're going hey wait a second um i thought we could just ask for advice and just take the advice but now we are under now it's more clear than ever that you cannot just be out here relying on what other people have been doing for a long time what other people have been how other people have been benefiting not understanding the position that they're in when they when they go into the uh that particular strategy or how they're benefiting from that particular strategy because everybody's situation is different and not all players are at the same level that's it that's it and you know um it's the one, you don't know what you don't know, so what do you do? You follow the path that's been laid before you. And you do. You feel like you're doing all of the right things that you've been told to do, but the game has changed. The dynamics are different. Uh, businesses aren't, aren't providing what, they're, what they were providing. Um, the tools that you're using aren't as effective as they were. So, so it's, it's how do you make that adjustment? And who's right. helping us understand what those adjustments are that need to be made? So she wakes up, and now she's realizing this – things are different right. like there's a there's a mess too to clean up right so right. there's like this assessment that she has to do but she also hears all this other messaging coming from other people that are saying hey there's uh, pull out your cash from the banks right uh, banks this is an right <laughs> They're collapsing, this is not safe. And all of this messaging, one of them particular, which I find so ironic at how perfect it fits. Have you guys heard of bricks? Put it in the chat if you've heard of bricks. Even if you're watching the replay, put it in the comments if you've heard of Bricks. B R I C S. Yeah. And it kind of shocked me how much this is blowing, how Bricks is blowing up, and ultimately it's it's the de-dollarization, if that's a word, de-dollarization of uh, the U.S. currency uh, as a result of these other countries who are now forming their own form of currency. So we're talking Brazil, Russia, India, China, 
and they've just now added, not just now, but they've added um, uh, uh, South Africa, and I think Saudi Arabia is even trying to join as well. But the bottom line is there's this collective that pulling together to kind of um, overtake uh, the state of the dollar, which how does that impact us? Um, right. The thought process is it diminishes the value of the dollar. And so th therefore, the dollar is no longer the currency of choice. And uh, obviously, it impacts the cost of everything. Right. Yeah. Um, and so Dorothy wakes up and she's got all this messaging. And I think everybody else, we're all Dorothy's, by the right. way, right. all of us. Right. To some degree. So uh, I want to show this video that we found because this is pretty much every video out there about BRICS right now is a burning building of information no different than hers. And I just want to give anybody with like, um, what is that phobia? What is that thing called where like you hear something and you just super grossed out? I want to give that disclaimer. That's only fair because this is, I can't even not talk about it. It's so gross. Okay, don't do this in your, there it is, Benita knows, she's, she's got it. I'm gonna play this video because this is pretty much every video you're gonna watch on Bricks is gonna sound just like this. You ready? Let's do it. All right. I stayed up till five in the morning on TikTok learning about Bricks. If you haven't heard of it, research it. The entire world order is about to change. The U.S. is going to be losing majority of its power. The U.S. dollar is tanking at lightning speed. And when I started learning and just started watching these videos on the state of the economy, going back to how many times this has happened for United States and what the implications and effects that this could mean for the world. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, why aren't they teaching this in school? Why aren't we taught about money? And this whole like... In the last like two years, I swear to God, I've been on like this roller coaster of learning things. And every time I learn something new that benefits us as humans when it comes to advancing and becoming financially free or doing things that are not what was told us to do, like to go get a job, to go to school so that you can work and for the rest of your life, pay your bills and be on this cycle for the next 30 years. And then they sell you on the fact that when you retire, you're going to get a pension and that pension is supposed to keep you alive for the next 15 years while you have withered away and wasted your entire life working for someone else just to live on a paycheck and never being able to actually find the freedom to go live out those dreams and those passions that are implanted inside of you there is a reason why they do that they just want to silence you they don't want you to know the system they don't want you to figure it out because if you do how the hell are they supposed to make money and when i say they i'm talking about the banks i'm talking about the government system i'm talking about the rich becoming rich at all cost so what can you do to actually get out of this programming this conditioning it's called educating yourself it's called learning so there it is and I just just cut it off just because essentially what she's saying is the same thing the wizard said, right? right? By the time you get down the road, you realize you needed to educate yourself. It's not really their problem that you don't have enough to, to care for yourself. It's not really their problem that you weren't financially literate. It wasn't their problem that this wasn't taught in schools. It wasn't their problem. And so this is why it's more important than ever that we just band together and we support each other in one way. I we believe that we grow farther and faster when we grow together. And so each one, is, each one, right. each one, teach one. Bring somebody I, I, in here. Share this out. He needs, I pray to, needs this to get around. Is, um, what this platform is for, right? It's because um, I think she's right about the education piece. Um, I think what irritates me about this rabbit hole of information related to this subject, bricks and you know how it's impacting things and what you should do there is not much information if any out there about what actions you can take right it's it's really more about be afraid be scared go learn as much as you can because things are about to change but what can we do what what should we do uh, what actions should be taken and it started me to thinking you know um let's say we woke up tomorrow and the dollar was now de-dollarized Right. We wake up tomorrow and and everything that these videos on YouTube and TikTok are saying is actually happening. 
well, what control do we all have individually, because we're all in different stages, but what control do we have to be able to take action or adjust? Like, what are those things that we can honestly do? Well, let's look at those things specifically. Right. If, if we're talking your, sa your savings account. If the dollar is now de-dollarized and you've got what a hundred dollars sitting in your hundred in your in your in your savings account and now it's de-dollarized, that ultimately means that this hundred dollar bill is worth less. So if it's a hundred dollars today, it might be ten dollars when the dollar is de-dollarized. So what action can you take now with your money and your savings to counter this issue? I think we can agree that there's not much you can do at this point. Yeah, so, cash is, ca holding your cash is not going to help you regardless. Right. So what should you have done? Right. Okay. I think what you're going to run into is those people who, uh, again, have something to benefit from by you taking some type of action immediately. Right. Uh, and not fully understanding what that action is. So let's say you take that savings and you go buy gold. Right? Which is what everyone's saying to do. Absolutely. Go yeah. buy gold. Okay. Then, so you go buy this gold with which, your savings account. Which. Awesome is really a yellow brick. But still, let's go. I mean, there. it means something. It's definitely gold. It's a commodity. Yeah. Like I get mm -hmm. it. You go buy the gold and now you have $100 worth of gold and then the dollar becomes de-dollarized, which means that gold is now worth 10 times more than it was. That's awesome. What's the impact to you now that you have this gold? Well, there's a tax implication involved because now you have made all of this money off the de-dollarization of the dollar. And so now there's a there's a tax impact that you have to take care of as well. Now you made a great return. That's awesome. But, but ha would there have been a better way? But by the time you, you get your penalties you, on all of that adds up, what, do, what are you left with? And sometimes people are blinded by that right. because they are looking at, well, how much is my crypto? How much is my X worth? Right. right. And right. they, they, by the time you actually go to uh, leverage that, then you realize that isn't actually the amount and that's right. really sad. So I would love for you, we've, we've prepared something and I would love to jump in uh, to show them, what do you do when you wake up back in Kansas and you're assessing all of your situations and what, where's the starting point? I think that's the important part is what is being talked about right now? How does this apply? Does this apply to you? Does this impact you? Should you even be worried about it at all? Or what should you be doing that would have the most impact for you right now? Exactly. And that's what we're going to get into. Let's do it. All right. Things look good. Okay. So right. um, ultimately, this is different for everyone, right? But the moral of the story here, this story of Dorothy is all of us. We are all Dorothy in some some way, shape, or form. We are all in a different position. We are all, um, you know, whether whether you're just starting out, just graduated college, got a brand new job, and now you're making income for the first time in your life, or married with a couple kids, whatever's happening, you're divorced, uh, you know, entrepreneur. We're all in different places, but the truth is we're all Dorothy. And the objective is to be able to educate ourselves and understand what role, what could be different if, if, again, if the world, if the next tornado comes through and turns everything upside down and, and drops, <laughs> drops a couple of houses on some people, are we in a position right now to be able to take advantage, to be able to address? And so, again, no different than, you know, should I take my money out of my savings account and go buy gold? Um, you know, again, what kind of control do you honestly have? If you've got a 401k with your current employer and tomorrow BRICS takes over and the dollar is now de-dollarized, um, what control do you have over your company's 401k to be able to do anything different? I think at this, at that point, there's really not much you can do. So how can you prepare yourself to be able to take action, to be able to do something different if God forbid something were to happen? And, and to me, this is the moral of the story here is it, it's about control. It's about you taking control over your current um, current well-being so that regardless of what happens, regardless of what the new event is, whether it's we change presidents, inflation is causing eggs to be eighty four dollars a dozen. Um, bricks comes into play. Uh, banks are failing. Whatever those issues are, you have positioned yourself such that you have the control to be able to pivot. I'm not I'm not here to kind of talk through what those events are. We are not going to talk about bricks, but what I would like to talk about is what you can do differently. And so if you were to look at this game board, it kind of speaks as though uh, or uh, the visual the, the visual here is we are all Dorothy and we are all in different places. 
So whether we are um, just starting out, uh, we've been um, in, in the workforce for a while, between here and here, or you know what? We are almost to the finish line. We are almost to that point where retirement is here, right? Regardless of what what position you're in, but the bottom line is without education, without kind of doing things a little bit differently, uh, we're all in the same place. And so the objective is, you know, what does that look like? Oh, so wait, hold, hold on one second. I want to tell you that the blue is hard to see. Okay, let's go white. Okay, yeah. so let's kind of start here. So let's say um, for my individuals who, uh, yeah, let's center. Uh, for my individuals who, let's say, just finished school, they are just started their career. They, you know, making a modest amount. I think in this case, twenty five, uh, making thirty five thousand dollars a year. A uh, couple credit cards. I guess white doesn't show on this one. A uh, couple credit cards, car note, and with the goal of retire early. And again, twenty five, thirty five thousand dollars a year, single. The goal, the whole point, the whole purpose is: what do I need to do? What actions do I need to take so that I can put myself in a position to be able to retire early? Well, something to think about. Um, can you name one retirement vehicle that you know of today that would currently posi position you or anyone at this age to be able to retire early? Is there one? IRA, 401k, 403b, TSP, government 457 plan. Is there one that would allow you to retire early? And the answer is no. If you, if you try to retire early out of any of those types of vehicles, you'd be taxed and penalized. So what do you do? Is there any option for you? And what I also love about this generation, so we're talking anywhere from age 15 to maybe 35, maybe even 40, is these are the people who are impacted by the, all you gotta do is. Meaning they get a lot of feedback from the silent generation, from people like myself who have headed down a path, who've, you know, feel like they have all of the answers. And all you got to do is follow this path. All you got to do is make sure you're maxing out your company's 401k. All you got to do is take these specific actions and you will be putting in yourself in the same position that I'm in to be able to ride into the sunset uh, debt free and financially uh, secure. And they're calling and, them tried and true. Right. And but the truth is. <laughs> The the, uh, the the game has changed. Right. The truth is we are we are not at the same time. The silent generation had their pensions in place to be able to, you know, and all they had all they had to do was work their 30 years. And now they have this pension that pays out for the rest of their life. The dynamics have shifted. Those things don't exist. But they the, don't they don't act like they they have shifted. Right. Right. But but all, but again, the message that these people are receiving is all you got to do is. And so what I ultimately wanted to talk through was what does that honestly look like? Well, for those individuals in that range who are hearing from the um, silent generation, or even people like myself who are giving the feedback of, Hey, all you got to do is max out your 401k, um, you know, be, be conscious of the debt that you have and everything will be okay. Well, how do you specifically do that? And it starts with some specific vehicles and I'm going to call it first velocity banking. Velocity banking from the perspective of, okay, she's 25, she, 25 years old with some credit card debt. What honestly, what assets does she have available to her to be able to take action even if she wanted to? Well, the way you figure out or free up income to be able to invest or uh, contribute to uh, some type of early retirement type opportunity is you have to understand what your numbers are. You have to understand what your cash flow is. You have to understand what's available to you. The best way I've seen to understand what your cash flow is, is a concept called velocity banking. We did a, um, a video a while back or a live a while back talking about a gentleman purchasing a scooter and the tools that he used to be able to do so. And this is what I'm talking about. Once, once, once you understand your, um, once you understand your, um, your cash flow, you're able to take that cash flow and then put it somewhere at the age of 25, making $35,000 a year, the best thing that can be done here is a secure compound interest account. They call it a SCIA. Secure compound interest account is a vehicle like maximum premium indexing. 
It's a tool that is unlike an IRA, a 401k, a 403b, or t- traditional retirement account. It's a vehicle that allows you to put money in it. And whenever you need access to that cash, it's available to you. It's a vehicle that allows you to actually be able to achieve an early retirement. And based off the fact that uh, she's making $35,000 a year, usually what I tell people around this age is it's 10% of your income. Take a look. If you could behave as though you make 10% less and take 10% of your income and put it in a vehicle like a secure compound interest account, what would that do for you? Well, $35,000 a year, 10% of 35,000 is $3,500. $3,500 divided by 12 is almost $300 a month. So if she was in a position to put away $300 a month, what would that do inside of a secure compound interest account? Well, I kind of did this math early on and that would produce for her right around by age 55, about $75,000 a year tax-free. And that's just maintaining that $300 for until that age. Now, but as she, she makes more money and yep. every, as she gets older, obviously she would have a, be in a position to be able to put more in. But if she just maintained 10% of her income right now in a secure compound interest account, it would allow her to retire four or five years before everyone else is even uh, able to think about it. And isn't it crazy? Because it seems like this should be already our expectation coming out the gate, not an add-on, not an opt-in type of thing. And so if we're working, regardless of where we're working, regardless of what it is that we choose to do, that this is already an expectation for us. Whereas for most people, it's not because we can opt in later, right? right. I want to see you. you should, I want to see you when you talk. Um, but no, I agree with you. Um, and And the thing about that is, What does that do? When you understand your cash flow and you're able to put it in a vehicle that you're able to access while you're still living, now you're creating creating a situation where when it's time to buy that home, you've got a vehicle already prepared, already growing uh, compound interest to allow you to be able to access. So ultimately, a position like this would allow you to kind of jumpstart your ability to be able to move through this game faster than people are traditionally able to do at her age. And then from there, oh, I knew I was going to do that. And then from there, we move into the next type of individual. And these are the ones who have a decent career, make a decent income. Um, They are starting to achieve that quote unquote American dream, right? The two kids, the dog, um, you know, married to two income household and they're starting to get wrapped up in um, stuff and things. So these are the people who um, <laughs> the uh, Emerald City comes along and entices them into using some of that income to be able to, um, you know, use some of that hard earned income to buy that stuff and things that, you know, you're now in a position you're, you're, you're in a better place than you've ever been. You, are, you have access to money you never had access to. Uh, now it's time to you know buy, create that man cave and buy that big screen TV. And you've got your two and three-year-olds in ballet spending thousands of dollars a year. And you're, you're starting to focus on that stuff and things because you now have the income to be able to do so. And you've never been in a position to be able to do that before. But what does that then create? This is where the debt comes into play. This is where the, the, the falsehoods of, of Emerald City starts to entice you and you realize, hey, I'm starting to get ahead of myself. And if the goal here, the goal in this case, is to be able to buy a, ho- a home in five years. So what are, what are the things that you have to do when you're in this age group? Again, you make decent money. It's a two-income co- two household. So what are those things that you have to do to be able to put yourself in a position so that you can uh, effectively buy a home, knowing that you've kind of gotten caught up in, into the stuff and things, so credit bills might be a little bit high? Um, and then in addition, yes, you're contributing to your company's 401k as normal. And, you know, you've been spending some time trying to understand what you should do with your career. So you may even have a few previous employers plans out there, not doing much of anything. But again, here comes this tornado of de-dollarization, uh, or yeah, de-dollarization of the dollar or, um, healthcare costs or whatever the issues might be comes about. How do you adjust? Well, okay. Hold on, I'm going I'm to change the, the scene real quick. No problem.
Okay, so the one thing that I wanted to mention though is everyone's played shoots and ladders, right? Right? You guys have played, you're familiar with this concept. And this is essentially what I wanted to just go back real quick to both of these two Dorothy versions, right? Is not only can you skip forward and you can go faster, right. but you can also, uh, if you're not prepared, you can get sucked back. And that's kind of the, the, the concept. And I think all of these games that we've ever played have all been been these lessons for us but because they're associated with candy and they're associated with these um you know storylines that don't necessarily correlate directly that we not really we don't really understand what it was somebody was trying to show us or they just it, it didn't land and it needs to be more present but i think this is more of a visual example of uh, being prepared that you don't have so many you don't get set back so many spaces right and so what do you do? What do you do to prepare yourself for a BRICS or a financial meltdown or banks are are going be going into disarray? Again, knowing at this stage of your life, one of the goals is to be able to buy a home. Right. Well, again, it goes back to it's the velocity banking part. It's understanding your numbers. It's understanding where you are currently. And then um, taking taking that cash flow that you've identified and now it's all about changing your credit profile. Well, if you understand where you are and you understand the cash flow you have available to you and you use Velocity Banking properly, you are allow, that, that's how you uh, in, improve your credit worthy position by decreasing your debt to income ratio, improving your credit score, putting yourself in a better position to be able to buy a home. But one of the biggest pieces you need to be able to buy a home is the down payment. Yeah, and leverage. Right, and leverage. And so where do you get that leverage from? Well, based off their situation, they've got some previous employers' plans. So okay. here's an opportunity where maybe a self-directed 401k is oh, more can, like that tool, more like that what, option. We can't see what you're writing. You have to shrink it all down. Yeah, it's good. So it's velocity banking and, and a self-directed 401k may be that tool. Why? Because the self-directed 401k allows you to actually borrow from it. So if you've got a previous employer's plan that has money in it, you're able to leverage that previous employer's plan to be able to do whatever it is you want. And so if putting a down payment on a home is one of those things that you would like to do, there is a vehicle that's readily accessible to you to be able to do so. But in addition to that, again, once you identify that cash flow, there's also that secure compound interest account. Again, right. your it's, money it's, making money. It, it, that's it. And it, it's about leverage. So if you're using your cash flow to put it in a position such that your money is making money and it's compounding over time, when you in five years, when you're ready to or when you're needing some type of down payment to be able to jump into this home that you're wanting to purchase, you've now placed yourself in a position where this is when I say a secure compound interest account, I'm saying regardless of what's happening with the stock market, your secure compound interest account isn't impacted because there's this thing called a zero percent floor. Now, it, um, and, let, and let's say, you know, again, the de-dollarization uh, situation occurs. Now, we will all be impacted, but at least in this position, if you have a self-directed 401k, you have the ability to adjust. You have the ability to pivot, meaning if the if the right way to move out of a situation like that is going to purchase purchase a commodity like gold or silver, because you have a self-directed 401k, meaning you have control over your retirement dollars, you can actually purchase gold within your 401k. And if done properly, this can come become a tax deferred, if not tax free purchase. So capital gains is not a, not an issue and all of those issues that would be impacted if you use your personal money. But if you're not structured properly, how do you how are you able to do that? Right. I think that and just I, I'm curious if people think that we're, when we're saying get self-directed, if we're meaning to get a self-directed 401k or IRA specifically. And I, I, I think it's probably wise to just clarify that. Not a problem. That, and so when when I say self-directed, what am I saying? Yeah. Uh, when I say self-directed, I mean, take control. Uh, there's all of these vehicles within your life. Uh, that you have access to be able to have more control over that you may not realize. And I'm talking any, like, like, for instance, one of the largest assets we have is the home that we live in. Right. And most of us have a mortgage on our home. Well, if you wanted to put a million dollars into your home, how easy would it be to get that million dollars out of your mortgage? 
how about next to impossible without selling the home? Without selling it, right. Right, without selling the home. But if you just simply adjusted your mortgage to a first position home equity line of credit, and basically what you're doing there is you're moving your mortgage from a closed-in product that you can't get, you can get money in, but you can't get money out, to an open-ended product that money is able to move back and forth in and out of, meaning now you have access to your own equity, and it's by debit card. So it's control. Um, you have these previous employers' plans that are sitting somewhere collecting dust. They may be growing, but growing modestly. But you don't have any control over, hey, if the, if the world takes a turn, if that tornado hits, what, what ability do you have to make an adjustment on the fly? You don't because you have very little control. And, well, it's not just what you can invest in, but it's also that there's a stream of paperwork for them to give you permission to make changes inside of your traditional uh, retirement vehicles. But let's be clear, you can't. Like, the paperwork doesn't matter because the minute you go to touch it, you're gonna be what? Taxed and penalized. Right. So you can't. And right. the custodian that holds your company's 401k will only allow you to invest in what they have. So if that custodian doesn't offer gold, you can't purchase it. If that custodian doesn't allow you to buy an apartment complex with your 401k, you can't do it. So you lack control. I want to just bring this point in mm -hmm. because not that I have it out for Glenda, the good witch, but I just want to make this point. Dorothy never put on the shoes. She never put the shoes on the witch Glenda, okay, put the shoes on her and then when the bad witch was like, I'll get you, Dorothy. It's only because of the shoes. And your little dog too. That's right. <laughs> but she only did this because Glenda put the shoes on she her. She was set up. Exactly. And so Glenda was like, yeah, let me give you these shoes. I'm going to tell you that they're special. I'm going to tell you that they're worth something. I'm gonna, I could have done anything. I could have hid the shoes because I got magic. I didn't. I put them on you, put a target on you because... That's what I get out of it. Um, I just want to put this out there because when you said that this is the product, they can only give you and offer you what products that, or what they products offer they you offer. The products that they have, yes. Right. Uh, this is no different where you're going around going, why isn't this working? Why am I having this experience? Couldn't this be different? And they're going, no, keep going. Right. <laughs> just keep going. Knowing that if it would be so much easier for her, that witch wouldn't have been after her. Those flying monkeys wouldn't have been after her. There would have been a whole lot of traps and things that happened to her circumstance just simply because she was, she, they, the witch put those shoes on her and she knew better. She already knew what was going to happen. So I, to me, I see this as the same situation. And it's no different than, um, you know, again, all you got to do is, right? Yeah. She, was, she was blindly led down this path. Yeah. Why? Because she was told that this is this is all you have to do. And how many of us again, how many of us are invested in the the areas that we're invested in only because that's what our dad did. That's what our parent. That's what our grandparents did. That's what we were told to do by HR when we were sitting in that cafeteria. Like whatever those reasons are, nine times out of ten, it's because Glenda, um, the uh, silent generation or the wizard said, all you got to do is right. Yeah, or it's everybody in the Emerald City who the influencers and people who are out there go, who oh, support the whole, they're in on the gig. They know that the wizard isn't real, but they like the fact that they get to stay there and have that lifestyle. So they're going to keep telling people that the wizard is real. And just to go down the, the yellow brick road at this point, it's more for uh, performative than anything because to, they already know that it's not real, but they Absolutely. benefit. They benefit from it. So... So, so what do they next, do next? Our next Dorothy, and this is actually my one of my favorite Dorothys because, um, make sure I am centered, hold on. Um, from a self-directed perspective, from a control perspective, this is the majority of the clientele that, that, that I deal with. And, and to me, these are the people who are used to doing things in a non-traditional fashion. So it's more of a... non-traditional approach to things, meaning they're entrepreneurs. 
Um, they're out here. Uh, they're they're social media influencers. They're YouTubers. They're drop shippers. They're um, uh, real estate investors. There's people. They're people who maybe they had a traditional job, but they realize, you know what, the path that I was heading down isn't serving me, and I have this passion to do these other things. Oh, traveling nurses too. The, the whole nine. There are these people who just simply take a non-traditional approach to their career. And the eight, the the the. Uh, and again, I have forty-two because that's just the next step, but. The, the range of individuals in this list are, are very wide. And again, what I have here is 42, divorced, uh, got three rental properties. But those three rental properties are bringing about $12,000 a year in income. Some people see that as good. But if you do the math, that's $1,000 a month. If I've got three rentals and this is my form of passive income, how many more uh, rentals do I need to uh, be able to compensate? What does that say? $60,000 a year in income is what they have. So if the goal is to use my entrepreneurship to be, uh, to, to also build my retirement, what does that look like? And for most of the people who are in this bucket, very few of them have a current retirement set. So the, so they wake up at 42 and go, Oh, you know, I've made some great money in my lifetime as a, uh, you know, social media influencer or as a YouTuber with all this affiliate marketing. And I've, you know, I've taken the trips and I've, you know, you, you've seen the growth and the development. But when you look in my uh, retirement bucket, there's not much there. Well, and so and they kind of wake up at 40. I mean, 42 is um, Being nice. happens really fast. Yeah. <laughs> And I think that's what you do is you wake up and you're just like, skirt, like, wow, we're here already. <laughs> that's crazy. Right. And, and so long you were asking, like, are we there yet? You know, and then at some point you're like, just slow down. <laughs> like, we're here already. And I think that's kind of how it happens for most people, which is why we have to start talking about this. Right. And educating our kids, like bringing our kids in on this, these conversations, too, by the right. way. And, it, and it's and some people think this is complicated. Because here's the thing, here's my issue with the non, the people who take the non-traditional approach. Where do they get their financial advice from? They get their financial advice from those who do traditional investing. So they're, you, they stepped outside of the box to generate the income that they have in their career. In a non-traditional way. In a non-traditional way, but then they go to Fidelity to create, or, or Robin Hood, and they have their money tied up in the market and are, are not clear as to why. Right. When, or the risks. Absolutely. And so and there's a non-traditional approach for them to be able to um, achieve their goals uh, from a financial perspective as well. And so in, in kind of talking through that. Bernita says she does not want to be delivering pizza, Donnell. And I wasn't even going to bring that up. See? <laughs> See? I, th I think I she knew. Good. I was doing good. <laughs> and so... <laughs> And the, the thing about this, though, is so, so again, this is an entrepreneur that has three rental properties, bringing them $1,000 a month. If they're making $60,000 a year at age 42, and if that's the income they want to achieve, how many rental properties would be required to achieve that same income of $60,000 a year? If I've got three, that's 15, 15 rental properties? required to just to achieve the $60,000 a year based off this current profile, mm -hmm. maybe there's a better way. What if, and, and I think what it also said on that sheet was uh, those three rental properties have about uh, $300,000 in equity. Just sitting there. And just so we're clear, this is a real example of a real client this week. $300,000 in equity, but you're only making $12,000 a year in income. Like it's not balanced. What if you sold one property? sold one property and received the uh, income based off the equity that you have. Again, $100,000. You take that $100,000 of equity and you dump it into a secure compound interest account. And then again, using Velocity Banking or whatever those steps would be, you identify what that cash flow is that you're able to uh, contribute on a regular basis. And you dump that lump sum into that secure compound interest account to allow you to start generating income during these uh, from that age 42 to 65. And I did some little, some short math with a hundred thousand dollar lump sum putting away. I think it was, I think I had them doing $500 a month would allow him to achieve about $156,000 in tax-free income for the rest of his life. 
But what what would that money have been doing if it was just sitting in the house in that same amount of time, not knowing whether or not that same amount of money was going to be worth that amount of money? Because there's no possible way it was ever going to grow to being lifetime income at that amount ever. One house. And I go back to the, my earlier conversation around a mortgage. All three homes have a mortgage on them. He's got equity. And so let's say in those whatever that time frame is, those homes are paid off. But you can't take advantage of the equity in the home unless you sell the home. So right. it's just equity sitting there doing nothing. It's not an asset. It's actually a liability because he's not leveraging it. Yeah. But you know what's so great about this, though, is that in a situation like this, someone is just literally sitting on a diamond, right? right? They don't realize it. Th th in their nest egg, they have diamonds. And th what's I think it would be amazing to go and learn. One conversation with you has completely changed the game for this person just simply because they didn't know how to identify what it is that they actually had. So it's no different than uh, if you had a bike, but all you're doing is using your feet to push you forward, right? And you explain to them, hey, these things are called pedals and you just got to push them and now look how fast you can go. And I think that's the cool part is that instead of them going like, gosh, I didn't know. They're like, now I can use it and I'm not going to waste a single day with this information from here Absolutely. forward. And it's, it's not inventing new tools. It's being able to leverage the tools that you have. Right. He's got three rental properties with $300,000 of equity. How can you leverage that equity to be able to help you hit your goal? If your goal is to be able to create a secure re retirement account and be able to retire at a decent age, then how do you leverage the, the tools that you currently have to be able to do so? So it's the first position HELOC even, converting some of those mortgages into a HELOC that now he has the equity that he can use to also dump into a secure compound interest account. And I also have up there a self-directed 401k because most of my entrepreneurs don't have a vehicle that uh, they can use to, I'll call it, uh, reduce their taxable uh, uh, impact, tax, their tax impact. And so they need a, 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 um, uh, a tax shield to be able to do so. And a lot of times a self-directed 401k would be able to, uh, to do that form as well. But really in a case like this, it's the secure compound interest account that's the key. Because regardless of the age, you don't have to wait till 59, you don't have to wait till you're 65. So regardless of the age, all of that equity from those homes that you use to dump in here, you, you're able to get them right back out and even go buy more properties if you wanted to. Right. And I think that's the key is you're not saying don't invest in real estate. Right. You're right. saying where your money, like make sure that your money is making its own money, not just investing and sitting because that's the danger, dangerous part, especially when you can't leverage it. Right. And, and the key here is, again, if the tornado comes and the dollars de-dollarize, I keep I, that word is fascinating to me, the dollars de-dollarized or inflation skyrockets or whatever the issue is, how are you sitting right now? What can you do right now to be able to pivot and, and adjust? The key is putting yourself in a position so that you can adjust. I'm not saying that any of this will fix a BRICS issue. I'm not saying that any of this will fix uh, skyrocketing inflation. But what it does is it allows us a space where we have leverage to be able to take action regardless of what that action is. Yeah. Um, so Benita asks, so a HELOC is leveraging it? So a first position HELOC. Uh, and again, let me also kind of preface this. I am not going into any detail as far as any of these uh, options, velocity banking, secure compound interest account, first position HELOC, um, self-directed IRA or 401k, I'm, I am not going into any detail. I think what I, what I can do is, right, use Thursday to help you understand the how. But you asked about a, a, a HELOC. So what I'm talking about is in place of your current, in place of the current mortgage. And again, in this example, it's a, let's call it a $200,000 home with $100,000 of equity. Um, which means there's a hundred thousand dollar balance on the of mortgage on the home, replacing that hundred thousand dollar mortgage with a first position home equity line of credit. So there is no mortgage. What you have is a HELOC in place of it. What that HELOC does is it allows you access to the equity that you have in your home as you pay down the uh, balance that's owed. So how do you pay down the balance that's that's owed? You dump all of your income into it. It's velocity banking. So it's velocity banking. You're using uh, the velocity banking approach, but you're using the first position HELOC as the tool. In the examples that we did before, the velocity banking approach 
we use credit cards or we used a line of credit to be able to do so. This is no different. It's just a different tool, but the approach and the process is the same. So I right. hope, hope that helped. But the bottom line is the HELOC is a tool that you're using and you're paying it down. And, and as you pay it down, that um, equity that is sitting on that HELOC is accessible to you by debit card, meaning you can use it to pay bills. You can use it to buy properties. You can use it to do as your emergency you fund. Do. You can use it for whatever you want to do versus it's sitting in a checking account doing nothing for you. Doing absolutely nothing for you. Oh, but it is doing something for the bank because it's giving them a free loan to be able to lend your money that's sitting in your account to someone else. So it Emerald, is doing something. Uh, uh, the Wizard and Emerald City appreciate you. Yes, <laughs> they do. And you pay a monthly fee most of the time. And so in the last one, uh, this is a... Um, it's not on the screen. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I forgot we're on a different screen. My bad. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so this last one, this is a, I'll call it a consistent group of people that I run into as well. And again, it's not about the age. It's really about the goal and the dynamics. So right here, we're talking about 53, married, two income household. They've got a home and a lot of people that are in this space are focused on paying off that home. They don't want to start a secure compound interest account until they get all of these bills done. Why? Thanks to the silent generation, and the good witch and um, the wizard, we've been conditioned to believe that we have to be debt free before we can focus on um, taking action right now to be able to secure our future. So right. we've been conditioned. So we have to break ourselves of that. So it's right. hard. Right. Um, so you got a two income household. They've got equity in their home, a gang of equity. I think this is showing about $200,000 of equity in their home. They have decent cash flow, but here's the problem. The problem is they've laid out all of their retirement accounts. You know, their what, whatever their current positions are, what they've learned is if they lay out all their retirement accounts, their current retirement accounts will not allow them to achieve the income that they currently have. So regardless of what that number might be, their goal is to not have to downsize. But what is the message they're receiving from Emerald City or from uh, from from the wizard? What is the what is the what is the uh, response they're receiving from the wizard when they go to him for a direction? Yeah, he the says um, we're going to be you're going to be traveling actually in a box car. It's going to be <laughs> it's, it's you need to pay down your debts. Yeah, it's, it's giving you need to cardboard house. That, um, even though you've got this million dollars in your retirement. The real the million dollars in retirement is going to translate into forty thousand dollars of income. You need to just get comfortable with that. Yeah, and who right now? Because that's what it is right now, and that's the goal. If people achieve a million dollars in income, because we keep saying that, but that because that's a that's like the minimum goal is a million dollars. That's but, about two percent of Americans right now. Yeah, that's the minimum amount that you're supposed to have, but nobody's really even getting that. So if, if you hit the minimum, like you hit the bar, right? right. And then it's still 40,000 people today struggle to survive on that. And so it's just not ever going to be enough. And they need it. They need to be, re you know what? They need to be responsible and quit telling people this stuff. That's what they need to do. They don't need to say, okay, well, now we realize it's only going to be 40,000 guys. So that's not going to be enough. We're going to raise the minimum now to 3 million. That math math's a little bit better, doesn't it? You should Google it. it. Does because, that fix anything? It doesn't. But hold on. You should Google it because that's exactly what's happening. What's hap the um, the four percent rule is actually looking at reducing the four percent rule down to three and a half. And so, if you were to Google, what do I need to to effectively retirement re uh, to effectively retire with this dollar amount? What you'll find is it's about four and a half million dollars. Yeah. So that, Only. that's the goal. The goal is four and a half million dollars. Well, how realistic is that? And this group of people, again, regardless of the age, this group of people, this is the group of people who are focused on security. That's your people. That's me. Donnell's, Donnell's birthday is next week, you guys. We should have Stop. a... All right, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but these people are focused on security because why? Because they're feeling very insecure about the state of things. Hey, banks are collapsing. Uh, BRICS is coming. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, there's, there's a lot of insecurity around where we currently are. So what needs to happen 
to be able to retire at a de decent age. Well, they have to reduce risk because they don't have the time to recover. That's right. one one on the list. Right. And, you know, yeah, I've, I've, I've been doing what I've been told to do from the silent generation and everyone else that came before me. I maxed out my 401k. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those previous employer plans. Yes, I have those as well. But when I lay all of these out, I don't I see that math mathing to be able to allow me to hit that income goal that I want at retirement age. So what do I do? And hold on, Look, retirement age or the concept of retirement, sometimes it's because you can't work. It's not because you get to choose to stop. So let's just clear that up. And then the other one is, isn't it supposed to be that you're not working because now you can enjoy life because you put all of the work the years working in. But when you're trying to do that on $40,000 a year, are you traveling? Are you seeing the world? Are you doing all those things that even the lady on the video we showed in the beginning of the live stream that you're so passionate about that makes life worth living, right? You're not doing all of that on $40,000 a year. You're in 20 years from now, you would not be doing that probably on $80,000 a year. And that's what pisses me off about um, Munchkin land, right? Because they're all happy and, and, and dancing because they have their pensions and they have those, those, those tools in place so that they are okay from now till the time that they die. Right. And they're, they're preaching to us, all you got to do is do the same thing and you'll be just like us, not taking into consideration the dynamics have changed. Right. The IRA, 401k, 403b, TSP will not get you there the same way traditional pensions would. Right. But there's an option. Okay. There's an option that can get you there. Very similar to, and that's right, I got to make sure I'm in the. Yeah, make sure it's centered. I like it when it's centered. Don't you guys? Uh, I know you do. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm yeah. sending, sending pizza, cry face, pizza, cry face. So you again, guys are the best. two income household, make decent income, got a lot of equity in their home. What are those vehicles they can use to be able to set themselves up to be able to be in a better place. Like it, it's a broken record at this point. It's okay. I've got this equity in my home. So is there an opportunity to take advantage of that equity in the form of a HELOC? And once I take advantage of that equity, where do I put it? Well, is there an opportunity to take that, that, that lump sum amount and put it into a secure compound interest account? Why? Because a secure compound interest account bills, it does bill slowly over time, but it bills securely. There's no impact to, of market risk. So if my, my, my fear is my, if my concern is security and making sure I don't have to run into an issue where I now have to recover, which means I'm now delivering pizzas at the age of 75. If the, if the, if the goal is security, then what are those vehicles I can put my money in to make sure that I am secure when I need it? Yeah. It's not a 401k. Right. And I'm not saying don't have one, but just understand the power of what it is you have. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Take the match. Take the money that they're providing to you. But anything over that, get it somewhere that's not as impacted if the market takes a turn. So you're not moving the pieces, which is, I'm just going to point out that because of where this generation is, and these are a lot of the conversations that not only have you had, but these are conversations that have already taken place when the last hit happened, right? right. And it's, they didn't have the time to recover. So right at the, at the point where they felt like we've done everything we're supposed to do, we have put all the money in, we've sacrificed, we budgeted, we did all of the right things. And just because somebody made some decision out there that impacted things, right? Right. Something completely out of our control. Now our, however many dollars were in their retirement account, whatever was enough for them that they had planned for is now been reduced to a fraction of what it is. And now we don't have the time to make up for that. We needed that money today. And right. now what do we do? And by that time, it's too late. Is there anybody coming to say, I'm so sorry that this happened to you. Is there anybody coming to say, this is what we put in place uh, to supplement for you to make up for this? No. Right. And here's the thing, like, so, so to your point, in this situation, um, as you move down this path, because you've created your HELOC 
or you've created your secure compound interest account and you are getting closer and closer to your goal, what happens when that event occurs? Well, here's the difference between being prepared and not being prepared, meaning, yes, if, if the market takes a turn, we are all going to be impacted, whether you're in real estate, whether you're in traditional investing, non-traditional investing, it doesn't, we're all gonna be impacted. But the difference is how quickly are you able to recover? So whether it's a health condition or market impact that may knock you back and causes you to have to uh, kind of institute some type of recovery period, because you have that secure compound interest account that you're able to leverage now, you don't have, you're not concerned about being uh, taxed or penalized if you were to tap into your 401k to be able to take some of that money to be able to put you back into the position that you were because you've got this vehicle that you're able to access openly and effectively because you have a, a, a HELOC on your home and you've been putting all of your income on that HELOC. And now because inflation is where it is and you're using it, uh, 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 credit cards more. And so it, because interest rates are higher, you have that uh, income or that equity inside your home that you're able to use to be able to pay those things down. So which means your recovery period is a bit more in your control compared to being totally out of your control if you don't have these types of vehicles in place. So yeah, you're gonna get knocked back, but at least you're in a position to be able to move yourself forward faster versus um, you know waiting on someone to come and save you. Well, I wanna put this, cause Benita's saying like, this is depressing, this is sad. There's a few comments that are like, please stop with the pizza and it's really giving me a nightmare uh, situation because I don't wanna end up like that. But I think what I think we've, we're showing here, this is what my hope was anyway, is you can see where you can accelerate your growth, where you can accelerate your success, but also if you're not prepared, these blue lines, I can't, I can't do it, but the, the blue areas um, for the right people, those are accelerating, those are the shoots, right? those are the ladders right instead of taking the long way around right here's an opportunity for you to take a shorter path to right be able to get to your goal right but unfortunately for those who aren't prepared who are taking the longer path those end up being going the opposite direction when they're impacted and then they still have to take the long way back right and that's the part where i think if more people understood the strategies and they understood exactly how to leverage the strategies. You feel so empowered because now you know when you can make decisions. No different than the lady that you talked to with the real with the, with the um, all the equity she was just right. sitting equity on. Right, homes, right. Right, those are her blue paths, right? And now yeah. uh, we're talking about the Wizard of Oz. We're talking about how this is uh, this relates so well to what's happening right now in the financial landscape of just about every American and what they're they're facing. When I say just about every, I'm really not talking about the one to 3%. But sometimes what we're doing at our level, we're just down here in the 97%, right? Is being influenced by this one and 3%. They're not playing the same game. Right, right. And so they cannot influence our decisions or, our, or have the same, they can use the same strategy, sure. But it's, it's not worth uh, listening to somebody who has, who's working on millions of dollars, because if they lose a million dollars, that's not that big of a deal to them. If you lose $100,000, that's devastating to most people. Losing $10,000, devastating to most people. Uh, even $1,000 can be very devastating. And so we're just not all playing at the, the, the same game. We're not all on the same place on the board. And so this is just saying that, uh, oh, you were going to show them the compound cycles and why some of these things mean that if you're younger and you're just kind of uh, getting started, then you can still accelerate and you can still make this go faster. But if you're older, you have less opportunities for compound cycles. And so therefore, your strategy needs to be a little leaner so that you can move this more quickly and take advantage of when these shoots happen. And you can shoot down and skip the line and keep going. Uh, why you have those opportunities, right? right? Right. And the the key, like, at least for me, it's about what do I do? And I think the first step is take inventory of what control you have today. 
Like what are those items you fully have control over to be able to take action today? And then it's kind of stepping back and going, okay, maybe I don't have control today, but what are my options to be able to take control now? You know, so if it's a, again, just to, just to step the room, if you own your home and you have equity in your home, is there an opportunity to have more leverage based off this huge asset that you have? If you have previous employer plans that are sitting, again, when I say sitting around doing nothing, I'm saying they're sitting in, they're not getting the, they're not receiving the match that your current employer's 401k is receiving. They're, they're jobs that you've left and they're sitting there. They're still in some mutual fund, basic mutual fund stocks and bonds, and they're growing minimally. And all you're doing is watching them dwindle away. Is there an opportunity to take more control over those? If you are an entrepreneur or if you are a real estate investor and you have properties and you have equity, are you taking full advantage of that equity in those properties to be able to use it as leverage to be able to get you to your goals? And did so you it, know you had those options? Right. So it's, it's kind of just stepping back and taking just taking a, a good solid uh, overview or a landscape view of kind of what what you currently have in place and how much control you currently have over those items. And if there's an opportunity to take advantage, then let's talk about it because I can, I can help assist. I can assist you in unlocking uh, some of the um, 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 equity or some of the uh, power associated with some of those vehicles. And again, because we can't control what's happening in the financial space, but what we can control is those vehicles that we currently have in place. We can take more control over them, or we can also create new vehicles that are less impacted by what's ever happening in this financial space, meaning a secure compound interest uh, account. You get you a, a solid MPI plan that you are, are committed to contributing to over time. What you're creating is a machine, a machine that will literally print money for you once you've reached a significant amount of compound cycles. And speaking of compound cycles, if we were to kind of look at this, um, I guess I'll go to this one. It's about the largest that I can make it uh, for this screen. Compound cycles, uh, the, the way, the reason I wanted to introduce compound cycles is mainly because of this. Regardless of your age, uh, we were all born with a certain amount of compound cycles. It's right around 15. Okay, so what's a compound cycle? What that means is regardless of where you have your money, um, if it's in a, a you know properly structured, secure place, the average compound cycle is somewhere around six, five, six, seven, eight years, meaning it takes about five, six, seven, eight years for your money to double just one time. So if we're talking, um, and so the way you kind of identify what, how, you know, how, how, how quickly your money's growing is you take a look at the interest that you're making on whatever the opportunity might be. If it's a savings account bringing you 1%, or if it's an investment property that's bringing you 10%, or if it's a stock or a mutual fund that's bringing you 14%. If you use the rule of 72, divide that, take 72 and divide that interest by 72, it tells you how long it takes for your money to double. Well, as you're trying to understand or identify um, how many compound cycles do I have and how, you know, I'm, I'm X amount of age and, and I'll be, you know, my retirement age is X, whatever that time frame is away. How many compound cycles do you have? How much time do you have for your money to be able to double enough time to be able to produce income for you? So in the examples that we were using, we've got a 24 year old, a 34 year old, a 42 year old, and a, what is it, 50, 53? Yeah, 53. And, and ultimately what that's saying is for the 53-year-old couple who wants to be able to retire at a decent age, they are running out of compound cycles, meaning they have to be a bit more aggressive. They have to just be honest about, you know what, because of my age, um, if I don't want to end up delivering pizzas till I'm 85, I need to be a bit more aggressive around what it is I'm currently doing. If I'm 35, if I'm 42 years old, okay, I've got a, a few more compound cycles, but I need to get realistic around, you know, what actions that I'm taking to be able to achieve my goal. And I go back to just simply use the rule of 72. Well, and this is also saying that you want to wait until you're 70, or you can wait until you're 70. So some people, you know, they face 
some illness or some reason why they cannot continue working past a certain point. So you really don't know how much time you have. And that's right. just that's just a fact. So and we're living longer too, right? Yeah. Again, we have certain places in other, there, there are certain countries that are raising the retirement age and don't be shocked because I was going to get raised too. So these compound cycles will continue, but do you really want to be in that position? So what no. actions can you take right now to make sure those, you know, you aren't placed in that position. I think that's my, my, my goal of this whole conversation is just simply understand where you are and understand that there are vehicles out there that can get, help you get you out of that place. Yeah. Because the more you deep dive into social media, what you end up running into is a whole bunch of fear mongering and gaslighting. Hey, you should be afraid that these companies are coming for the dollar. Okay. You're afraid you being afraid accomplishes what, what actions can you take to at least be prepared? If there's a shift in this world that you're able to be able to adjust. Benita asks, um, is it 65 in the U S what is the current age? Um, so require minimum distributions have been pushed to 73. So they're not going to tell you that retirement age, uh, is 73, but the required minimum distribution has been pushed to age 73. Uh, the official retirement age in this country is 59. But most companies, again, it, these are cryptic. Most companies give you, I think it's age and points. So you might be 59 at this company, but if you don't have enough, enough points with the company, you still can't retire and get your full retirement. So they play these games inside of uh, these, these corporate spaces that force you to work longer so that you can achieve, achieve your full retirement. Social security is one of them. Hey, if you start taking social security at, at age 60, it's this dollar amount. But if you wait till age 75 to start taking security, uh, taking social security, it's a different amount. What are they saying? Right. If you work longer, you can have more money. So they're not telling you that the retirement age is older. They just keep slowly pushing things out. And we find ourselves forced to be able to uh, having to or being forced to participate in this game. Yeah. And that it is a game because what you what you're gambling in this in this situation is one they're betting that you're just going to just kick the bucket before they even have to pay out to you. Let's be honest. No, that's the truth. That's the truth. Isn't that a win for them? Cause then they will, they don't have to pay out. Well, social yes security. And no. Yes and no. Oh yeah. Yes and no. Cause there's a spousal benefit like this. Yes and no. Well, I, if I you have you. a spouse, yeah, but there is, there is a, there's a savings for them and then they get to hold on. Uh, see, my mom said the same thing on Facebook. They want you to die before you, they have to. Benita said, this is like squid games. This is exactly like squid games, Benita. But hold we, on. We could have done that theme. You're, you're right. This is like squid games. But once you learn that it's a game, now you get to, it's, a, it's about perspective as well. How do you use this game to play it better? Meaning right. the banks do not have your best interest at heart. Surprise. I'm not saying take your money out of the bank. Now, how do you leverage the bank better to be able to, to, to achieve your goals faster? So if right. the bank is the one pushing a mortgage on you, ask yourself why, because they benefit. So maybe I still leverage the bank, but instead of a mortgage, I use a first position home equity line of credit to be able to access my money the same way they're accessing, accessing my money. So it's about perspective. So I'm, I'm now using them as a tool where they were using me. Ooh, and I love that because it's really like saying you're only a victim once before you become a volunteer. Now that you know what's happening, now that you understand the rules of the game, now that you know that it's possible for you to understand the rules of the game, now you have to own the fact that now you're just volunteering. And um, a lot of my uh, uh, presentations. I'm reading my mom's comments and we don't well, condone robbery. I can't see him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, a lot of times what I tell uh, uh, my clients when I'm presenting to my entrepreneurial um, um, in, in these entrepreneurial spaces, I arm people with questions to go ask your financial advisor, because some people you might g gather from this that I have a problem with financial advisors. I actually don't. I have great relationships with with financial advisors who are true fiduciaries, because here's what they understand. They understand there are things that they can do and they understand that they have limitations. 
And so if you have, if the uh, financial advisors I have great relationships with, they understand that, hey, they may have to come over here to Donnell and get educated on some other things because it's about the full picture. It's about the portfolio. So, yeah. it's, it, so it's not that I have an adversarial relationship. It's you now understand how to leverage your financial advisor better. You now ha understand how to go to Fidelity and have a different conversation with Fidelity so that you can now take more control over your money to be able to do other things. It's the same conversation with the banks. It's the same conversation with insurance companies. Right. We've been conditioned to believe that um, 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 life insurance is about when you die. Yeah. Guess what? It's not. Life insurance is about while you're here, but you get the right, properly structured, secure compound interest account, which is a life insurance policy, and you leverage it to be able to produce income for you. Now, you didn't run away from the life insurance company. You're now leveraging the life insurance company differently to be able to achieve your goals. So it's, it's perspective. It's not just, yeah. you know, uh, you know, all is bad. The world is coming to an end. I'm depressed. No, it's yeah, OK. We've been victimized. Now, what actions can we take? to now take more control and get self-directed. And that's really what what uh, the one to 3% have been doing. They understand uh, and they have a strategy and they know when they can make moves and what moves to make just simply because they, they have access to information that is just not normalized among the rest of us. Right. And that's all. So this, this isn't anything illegal. This isn't anything that, um, that isn't ordinary to do. These aren't brand new things that nobody's ever tried before. Um, what is brand new is pretending like you're going to uh, make it to the end and then acting brand new when you realize that's not actually gonna get me what I thought it was gonna get me. That part of being brand new is actually getting old. We're tired of it, nobody wants that fate. And so we are now talking about these strategies. So let's talk about what we're going to do on, on Thursday and let these people get out of here. Yep. So on Thursday, I think because I've been very vague today, I think in these examples, uh, I think what I can do is pull up these same four examples and detail the how. Um, I kind of highlighted, you know, for the 53 year old, they, you know, use Velocity Bank and get a first position HELOC and open up a secure compound interest account to achieve their goals. But what does that actually look like? Like, what does that math look like over time? And how long does it take? Is it till age 95 or can they get, uh, a, you know, get a decent income by age 62 or 63? What does that look like? So I think digging into some of the details. And so that consists of pulling up the calculator and playing with some numbers. And here's what I would offer. If there's others, if there's other Dorothy's out there that have numbers they want run, we can bypass these, these, some of these are real, but we can bypass these numbers and use yours. Because again, the math is the math. If you feel like, you know what, this is my cash flow. And if I was to take some of my cash flow and put it in a secure compound interest account at my age and give it this amount of time, what does that look like? Let's do it. Let's, let's, let's kind of lay out, you know, some of this landscape for yourself and let's open up the calculator and see what it would look like. Yeah, I agree. And I, I'm so glad that you said that because if I really would hope that we won't, we don't need to use your name, but at least this way we're helping people that are actually tuning in and we're helping people directly versus helping them with hypothetical situations or telling them what other people, how other people are benefiting from these strategies. We can use client examples all day long, but we've already done those. We've already helped those people, right? right. So we can do use them so that you know, we give other people ideas, but this won't necessarily be your specific thing. It would just be so dope to know that you were just handed a solution. So this uh, to me is, is the answer. So I put the information up, I'll do it again. If you want to have your numbers ran, you can just text this number, 602-560-7311. I feel like that needs a jingle. You know what I mean? Like a little song, you know, the commercials are like 7311. It needs a jingle. I'm going to do one. So if you just text that number, you could DM, DM us. You can uh, go to selfdirected.info. You can get that there. Oh, I put a little checklist on the Velocity Banking blog over there on our uh, selfdirected.info forward slash blog. Put a little checklist on there to help people. And we had, um, we're starting to take our live streams and form them into like an article kind of make them a lot easier to digest for people who would rather read than watch us be us for an hour. To, to make but, sure it's clear as to what it would look like if you had your numbers run. Okay. This is not complicated. 
It right. is age. And we, I can either use income because I can back into a number if you shared your income, but maybe you don't want to share your income. Maybe it's um, this is the amount that I am open and or willing to be able to contribute. Um, okay. That is enough. Age, income, age, the amount you want to contribute. And from there, we can I, I can kind of dig into a fair amount of detail because here's what I'll do. If you provided me with a number that doesn't make sense, I'm going to share with you what does make sense. Meaning, if you're if you're use the 53 year old, if you're 53 years old and you want to be able to retire by 62 and your goal is to put away $200 a month to be able to achieve a six figure income, do that math. $200 a month, you got nine years left. How do you expect to achieve a six figure income based off $200 a month? So we do have to be realistic. So I will be able to make those adjustments just based off what you say as well. So uh, this isn't complicated at all. It's just your age, your income, or your age and the amount that you would like to contribute. And I can easily back into what that should look like. Yeah. Okay. Also, though, if you have assets, if you can already identify from some of these conversations where you might have leverage, I think that's also equally valuable because Absolutely. if you don't know that they own a home or you don't know if they if their goal is to own a home, then maybe you would then have some different um, suggestions for them. Right. And that's in line with that checklist that you put in there as well. Right. So th that yes. detail is there. And I'm just saying if 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 we're just talking about high level, you know, cut and dry, what does this look like? I can get there with the minimal amount of uh, information, too. OK, great. Well, uh, now you guys have everything that you need to be able to contact us before next time, before Thursday. So we need that probably like today, tomorrow, probably not Thursday morning. Right. Maybe. Yeah, right. it's yeah, it's it's fine. Right. It's fine. Just send it. Um, other, otherwise, we'll just use we we'll use we have a ton of examples so that we can use just on uh, client examples. Mm -hmm. So that that that'll be helpful. All right. So I think that's it. So Benita says age, income, the amount, income, the amount in which you contribute. Got it. Thank you to great show as always. We need to keep this up. We so appreciate everybody who tunes in. Your support means a lot to us, but we also just knowing whether if it's just you who we're talking to right now that we are able to help you level up, that is uh, what, what we're here for. So the people who are showing up, we know that it matters. We know that they are showing up here for a reason and that's why we have to show up. We gotta keep going. Bring it's tell a friend to tell a friend. <laughs> we need jingles. Dang it. All right. Take us well, home. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining in. Thursday, come back. And until then, I'm Angelique. And I'm Donnell. Get self-directed. <laughs> all right. Hold on one second, guys. Hey, before you go, we want to remind you that becoming fully self-directed means gaining complete control over your wealth, time, and freedom. It's not just an idea. It's a framework, a mindset, and the power to make informed decisions to secure your future. Being here means you're taking those steps, and we want to thank you for allowing us to guide you. We believe that we grow farther and faster when we grow together. So tune in next time and tell a friend to tell a friend. We've helped thousands of people just like you start their journey to financial freedom. And if they can do it, you can too. And if you're ready to learn more, we got you. Get a head start by grabbing these two free books. But how do they get them, Donnell? Head over to my website where you'll have access to a few things. A ton of free resources, case studies, and over 100 five-star reviews from people just like you. And in 15 minutes, we can explore what's possible for you. So don't wait. Invest, Invest in what, what you want, want, when you want. want. But first, let us help you get, get self-directed.